Welcome, delicious friend. They say that fallen London is a city of a thousand stories, and they'd be right. And I am here to share those stories with you. So sit back, pour yourself a glass of Broken Giant 1844, and enjoy. Hello again. Sorry it has taken me so long to get back in touch with you, delicious friend. My absence was due to circumstances beyond my control, I'm afraid. Regardless, that has all been cleared up now. By chance, did you visit Mutton Island for the Fruits of the Z Festival? I engaged in a spot of fishing myself, but if you didn't, I implore you to go next year. After all, they say you've never properly experienced rubbery lumps unless you've had them from their source. Plus, there are interesting things one can learn about certain citizens at any time of festivity. Now, I realise I told you of some grave revelations last time, regarding the nature of Stone and Mount Nomad. I apologise, I got rather caught up in my passions once again, something that has gotten me in plenty of trouble in the past, I can assure you. However, I understand the frustration this may cause, and I ask for your forgiveness. Now, today I may also be giving you insight into some rather interesting revelations concerning our eldritch squid-faced neighbours. If you don't wish to hear these, by all means, feel free to leave, and I will not hold a grudge against you. If not, have a seat, and let me tell you of Amber and Slime. The robbery men are quite possibly the strangest looking of London's residents, save for the masters, if the masters are as alien as I and others theorise, though this is not reflected in their personalities. Most of them are shy, anxious, and unfailingly polite, or as polite as one can be without speaking any discernible language, though the constables are making efforts, I suppose, to understand the noises the robbery men make. They are, however, terrifying to many who can't seem to get past the squid features, faces of squid and all. Understandable, I suppose. However, as a result of their unusual appearance and manner, they are often the victims of violence. The high spirits that surround these murders are rather depressing, all things considered, and are one reason I rarely leave my home these days. Oh, and um, horses panic at the sight of them for some reason. Now, rubbery men can be taught to behave in a more recognisably human manner, and there's good money in doing so, plus their company is really quite charming if you can get past the tentacles, and the slime, and the strange noises. It's a shame many don't bother. A true shame. Ah, forgive me. I must remember to take my own views out of these discussions. Bias is an ugly thing, wouldn't you agree? Now, as for what it is the rubbery men do in the city, well, they mostly trade in amber and small fish. Small fish that they also eat. They also have a love of human music. Their own music, however, is... Well, it's quite dreadful, all things considered. I can assure you that much. Not many rubberies become successful in their trading due to the aforementioned prejudices against them, but some have risen to some station, most notably being the tentacled entrepreneur. The amber trade is rather profitable if one takes the time to get involved in it. Now, not quite as profitable as the soul trade or the secret trade, but generally more honest and far safer. We come now to the origins, or at least as much as I know of the origins of the rubbery men, and if you do not wish to know these things, you may leave. I will give you a moment or two to ponder your decision before we continue. Consider this a warning. You're staying? Excellent. Whilst it may seem as though the rubberies are yet another strange native creature to the Neath, this is not the case. The origins, like those of the Bazaar, are connected to the High Wilderness, far, far above. They, like the Empress, the Duchess, and others, are here because of a deal. At least, that's how the story goes. The nature of this deal and its success is something I leave to you to find out for yourself. As for where they live, the rubbery men hold territory in Flute Street, deep in the caverns below London. The trek there is long and dangerous, as what lies beneath the Neath tends to be more fearsome than the creatures of our fair city. Beasts are not your only enemy on the trek, however, the darkness down there is almost as impenetrable as the blackness of the Z. Perhaps it is even worse, for at least at Z you have more than candles to rely on. What lies in Flute Street is fascinating, terrifying, and alien. You've heard of the Lawn Flukes, yes? The great spiked beasts that have been the ruin of many a ship out at Z. Creatures of terrifying power and strength, dangerous and utterly alien. Well, they are connected to our eldritch neighbours. Connected in ways vague enough to be open to interpretation. I cannot fully say what the connection is. Of course, I could tell you what I think it is, and what is happening down there, but for now, I won't. We shall let fate decide if you make that journey yourself. 
I apologise if you feel cheated, delicious friend, but I am not here to simply tell you all of London's secrets. I am here to encourage you to seek them out for yourself. Perhaps this puts you in danger, but to discover these answers for yourself will be far more rewarding in the long term, I assure you that much. Now, I do hope we see each other again soon.